Hi travellers, I'm Anne's daughter Laleco. For those of you that are considering coming to China or already have secured your job but not sure what it's going to be like once you live here, I have a very special guest who's going to share her wealth and knowledge of living in China as an expat with you. Her name is Amanda. She's come up to Qingdao to visit, which I'm so blessed. Like, we've had such a wonderful time already. So perhaps between the both of us, you'll pick up some ideas, some thoughts to consider as you're thinking, should I really come and live here? What is it actually like? So we've narrowed down a list of the top five good and five bad of what it is to live here in China as a foreigner, as a Lao Wai. No particular order. Of course, it's subjective. But bear in mind, with every country, there's always the good and the bad. Welcome, Amanda. I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> so we have four and a half years experience living in China between the two of us. I live in the north of China right now. We're in Qingdao, but Amanda currently lives in the south of China. There are some differences between north and south, so and it'll be based on our experience. But we did meet when we both lived and worked in the south of China. Let's start off with the bad, so we can end with the good. <laughs> First one for the bad parts about living in China is the language barrier. It's really hard. Um, I think because the Chinese language has zero similarities with English, um, so it's not the same as like in the states when you you learn French or Spanish. There's a lot of word similarities, like in French, camping is low camping. <laughs> but in Chinese, you don't have that linguistic similarity, so it's impossible to just pick up Chinese. It's not going to happen. But what about survival Chinese? Have you picked up a few words um, to get you around? In three years, without having formally studied Chinese, I have picked up ten words. I have picked up hello, goodbye, thank you, <laughs> correct, <laughs> and like... One through ten numbers, and that's it. <laughs> so I picked up like a very small amount, but it's not enough to have a conversation. It's not enough to be able to understand if someone asks you or speaks to you. Um, I had a small victory recently where my fruit guy said "Nina," and I was like, oh, "He's saying and you, and you. Like, what do I want?" And it was really exciting. Last night we went out for dinner, and we caught a cab. Being able to direct a cab, uh, like where my apartment is, I wanted the guy to take a little shortcut to go home. And so I'm literally Impossible. leaning over, going like this, Impossible. because I have no idea what left and right. It is possible to learn it if you're interested, but you're not just going to pick it up. I'm really good with miming, <laughs> but it does mean that it leads to a lack of independence on our part as foreigners trying to get along. We always need assistance from somebody, whether it's doing banking business, anything health related you can't or going to the post office those what normal tasks are damn near impossible it doesn't work out well I can't do anything <laughs> um, that's the honest answer so I always get help from my friend Chinese friends here so yeah that lack of independence is something to consider before you move to China. If you haven't already previously studied Chinese, I recommend doing so before you come here. Especially in rural China. So there is a big difference between big cities in China and rural China. Where I live now is rural China, um, and so zero people speak English there. <laughs> Literally no one. Whereas last um, night when we were stuck for trying to find the restaurant, thank goodness she spoke English. She set us in the right direction. So of course it would be much better in Beijing and Shanghai in terms of and even Guangzhou, in terms of being able to run into someone that could try and help you. Definitely. But before we found that lady, we asked like 10 other people, and they were just like, like we don't speak English. <laughs> and our second bad point about living here is the pollution. We know about AQI levels, and you can find out on your Chinese phones what the AQI is of the various cities. If you're worried about your health and how it's going to impact you, then it is something to consider. I'm going to put a link to my other video of smog and fog, so that can help you with your decision making as well. Um, recently actually developed asthma, so it took me two years here for my asthma to come back. Um, the health uh, consequences um, are severe. I a third bad point about living in China is the food. <sighs> I have made a video about street food, so I'm going to link that above. Check that out so you can see what options are for keeping it cheap 
there are days where you don't want Chinese food and remembering that Chinese food isn't how we know about Chinese food. It's not the sweet and sour pork. No crab rangoon. No fortune cookies. Brings my mood. So if you do have any dietary restrictions, China is going to be a nightmare. As for me, coming from the Midwest of America, growing up there, the, our concept of food is very much different than how Chinese people view what is food. Um, so I know Lilco and I last night were talking about, we went to eat Turkish food, which, oh, delicious, from Turkey. The lady was from Turkey. It was so delicious. We had hummus. But we were talking about how we can taste, like, the individual ingredients in the food. Like, we know what we're putting in our mouth. But in China, it's very common, even if you ask a Chinese person what is in this dish, they themselves have no idea unless they have prepared it personally. There's no potatoes anywhere. <laughs> so I know when I came here, I was like, I want mashed potatoes. I will, I'll take any kind of potatoes. But that's not part of Chinese dishes. Or, like, offered on the table in a restaurant. There's no salt. There's no pepper. There's no anything normal. There's vinegar, which is bizarre. Speaking about the salt, I actually bought with me these little, the individual salt sachets and I have one in my handbag for those times where I've been served something that is lacking. I Chicken hope. feet, can't do it. <laughs> Fried spiders, oh! can't do it. Nope. The fourth bad part about living in China is dealing with bureaucracy and it can wear on you. It took me six hours recently to mail a package home. In the U.S., the post office we know is like a five to ten minute, if there's no line, five to ten minute process, but it took me six hours. I wish that that was an exaggeration. With banking, the same. The process that the employees have to go through to complete your transaction is so much more long-winded than what we experience at home. How long these things actually take. It's shocking. So when I say they don't speak English, they don't speak English <laughs> and they don't read our numbers. So this adds time to the process of everything. To go to the doctor here, you have to go to a hospital, which makes it sound bad, but it's just a doctor's office. And um, the lady couldn't read my passport at all. I gave her my passport to try to help. I was like, oh, here's my name, look. She couldn't, she just looked at it and got overwhelmed because it was all in English and she's never seen an English document. So she just gave it back. Like that was useless. <laughs> like I can't. I feel like the takeaway from that is make Chinese friends, utilize the administrative assistants or whoever's on staff, wherever you're working and good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> the good points of China. Our first is the cheap cost of living. Depending on what type of job you have, you'll have some form of salary that you get paid monthly, which for me coming from Australia is difficult because a month is a long time. <laughs> but if you budget it out well, then you can be fine. I tried recently for a month to live on 1500 RMB. Chinese food here is really cheap, so if you do happen to find something you like, um, you can survive on so much less money than in America where the food is super pricey. That's true, and even when I think about uh, fast food, like the McDonald's meal is a lot cheaper than it is in yeah. Australia or New Zealand. Don't know about America though. It's still cheaper here. Okay. It's cheaper in China. Food's basically your biggest expense. Both of our jobs, they pay for our apartments, so that's taken out of the cost of living. Paying utilities, it depends on your job. My first job in China paid my utilities. My job now doesn't. But utilities, the most I've spent in the deep winter when it was cold was, let me think, like $164 for everything. Per month. Second point about the good things about living in China is WeChat. WeChat! Yes! <laughs> Here's a thumbs up from me. <laughs> <laughs> so WeChat is an app that you have to have. Sure. Amanda, why is WeChat essential for living in China? Alright, well, I actually have been here long enough to have seen the transition from QQ to WeChat. So when I came in 2014, WeChat was still not a big thing. Um, so everybody had QQ Messenger, which is uh, an app that was completely designed for Chinese people in China um, and was very non-user friendly for international or English speakers um, and so yeah like uh, my students made me get QQ when I first came and I didn't like it and was like oh I can't use anything on this it's so Chinese like the interface just didn't make sense but um, in that first year I was here from 2014 to 2015 WeChat 
became huge. Like, it swept China. It took over. QR codes were falling from the sky. It was raining QR codes. And so WeChat has taken over. And um, Because one of my Chinese friends I met in 2014 didn't even have WeChat yet. So it hadn't really become a thing. Whereas now it's basically invaluable. Like, if you don't have WeChat, it just makes your life harder. So the reason WeChat is good is because, first of all, you can easily link your Chinese bank. So everybody will get a Chinese bank if you work here. Your Chinese bank card to WeChat. WeChat. It's very simple. Make sure you get the Chinese version of WeChat in China. So you want to download it here. Um, but there is an English version of it. Make sure you download it in English and the Chinese version in English. And if you do that, you can easily link your bank card. And then when you go anywhere in China, the mall, anywhere, restaurants, you can just even scan. Even street, street vendors. Yeah, right? even street food now. Like Everybody will just like hold up a QR code and you can just scan it and pay. And it links directly. It takes it directly from your bank. So it's Actually, I will say one of the things I like more in China than in the U.S. Because in the U.S., we have to do it old school where we use our debit card. <laughs> um, and so I feel like WeChat is really futuristic um, as far as paying for goods and services. Um, you can also top up your mobile phone with WeChat. So I only pay my cell phone bill on WeChat. Um, you can also transfer money to other people. So like say somebody, you know, you owe somebody money, you can just send them the transfer on WeChat. Here are the current specials for McDonald's. They're valid. You can see the validity there from now to the end of October. Look at that burger. What is this? Yeah. I would most likely click the Sunday and chips. Click on that. And then I have this card so I can get that cheaper price when I go into Macca's for that use now so then when I get to the checkout I could just scan that for the cheaper price it's a mix of the apps that we already know it's got yeah the chatting capability like we know with WeChat uh, that we know with <laughs> that we know with WhatsApp and but it's this extra being able to pay with it that really sets it over the top. It's like MSN Messenger met Skype, which met your wallet and your purse. Oh, you put that all together, that is WeChat. It is so convenient. I love it. Two thumbs up. You have to get WeChat. <laughs> The point that we like about living in China, or the good part, is that if you can survive here, you can survive anywhere. <sighs> yes, that is true. Um, China will make you more open-minded and able to deal with challenges you would have never thought possible or you would have never thought that you would encounter. Um, and I feel like after three years in China, no matter where I go next in the world, I am so ready. <laughs> Starting yeah, Korea. Yeah, this is gonna be Don't start in shock. China. <laughs> start in South Korea. <laughs> it's an easier transition. Yes. <laughs> Both of us, she's absolutely right. Both of us lived in South Korea before we came For here. For two years, right? Yeah. As two years. So we had some ideas about the changeability, flexibility that happens. This is gonna set you on a path where no challenge is too big. <laughs> Very true. Now, fourth point about living in China is, fourth good point, is that it activates our critical thinking. Because we're seeing and experiencing and living through these challenges that we just spoke of um, in a way that we've never had to face before, it does it. It makes you stop and think. It makes us think about where we've come from and how it's done at home and then how we can apply it to whatever we're facing and at times it can be frustrating, which is not necessarily a good point, but it does make us stop and think what is happening, what's going on, and even that questioning, which other people may or may not do. <laughs> We do. We do it too much. This goes for living abroad anywhere, but in China, it's just more distinct from where you're from, if you're from a Western country. And so I really feel like, here it goes, in China, you put on a different lens. Now I'm looking through my China glasses, and life looks very different. <laughs> and this activates critical thinking, obviously, because I have to take it off and be like, this is where I'm from. Wait. China. Yeah, I'm in China. Aha. <laughs>
Our fifth point, which goes for both good and bad, because it depends on how you interpret this, is what Amanda told me, which has really helped me through a lot of tricky situations, is to think about China as opposite land. And it links into exactly what she's just saying, is that we come from somewhere else, and we don't necessarily understand what and why, <laughs> whatever the problem is, is happening. And so to think about it and going, this is just opposite to what we expect or what we know. And really just in those moments of what seems like crisis going, it's opposite. Oh. And I swear suddenly there's a sense of relief. <laughs> it I really is. It makes sense. Like uh, one easy example is um, if you give someone a gift in a Western culture, the person is supposed to open the gift in front of you. And if they just like take it and toss it aside, you'd be like, oh, that's rude. They don't even want my gift. In China, it's the complete opposite keyword so in China when you give a gift it's very normal for them to take the gift and then set it down and then go about their business um, because it's rude to open the gift in front of people in China um, the rationale behind that is because if like they don't like what you gave them or if somebody else gives them a gift that's better than yours it will lose face so there's the idea of saving face in China which we don't have in Western culture so um, so just that example you can see like it is literally polar opposite <laughs> um, and I have thought of so many examples where this is the case so you can just think whatever I would do in my culture I have to do the opposite here and you'll get along pretty well. <laughs> it does, because whatever is happening so illogically, suddenly you think, oh, opposite land. And it becomes uh -huh. logical. Oh, this is a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Living abroad is very eye-opening. And it's opened us to different experiences, different ways of living, different viewpoints and how we see the world around us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's great. We love living abroad. I love it. It <laughs> fundamentally changes your outlook on who you are, where you're from, because it's so fascinating to be here and see that this Chinese landscape is just nothing like we ever imagined or knew. And so, yes, there's good, there's bad, of course, but in the end, it's a learning experience. Thank you, Amanda. It's been such a pleasure, you're such welcome. a treat to have you here and sharing your <laughs> expertise is beyond. I really, Yay. yeah, please put in the comments below <laughs> if you have any further questions for Amanda and or myself, we're happy to answer them about when you come or you're already coming. <laughs> <laughs> you're already here and confused. <laughs> Forget to subscribe and please give it a thumbs up if you like this video. <laughs> Fabulous. Bye.